It's been going really well lately, for sure. Things are starting to come together. Um, we're getting more listings on both decentralized and centralized exchanges. We actually just had another centralized exchange last night, um, which was really cool. And then, uh, yeah, just talking to a lot of different teams across the ecosystem who are more more willing than I'd say before to to bring liquidity over and, and pair it against Arch or pair it against staples we have um, on, you know, like Astro Vault or, or other uh, platforms on Archway. So today I'm going to share with you a project you should put on your radar. It's a project you likely have not heard about, not yet at least. How do I know about it? Because I work in Web3 security, but I would like to point out two things. At the time of this recording, I am not an investor in Archway. In fact, Archway is not available to US residents. And two, my work on this channel is separate from my work at the security firm. Some of you know which one that is. If you like learning about early stage projects that have interesting tech, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your Web3 friends so that they can learn too. This is Max of Phylabs. Phylabs is the core contributor to Archway and L1 in Cosmos. The platform is structured to be developer focused, recognizing the pivotal role developers play in driving value. This type of incentive attracts talented builders. One in particular that has been catching my attention is Astro Vault. One thing I just realized immediately was that there's a, a massive issue with like token allocations, tokenomics, and how people are designing their, their basically token economy to never be profitable or to really not have a, a, a clear path to sustainability. So I would say about almost two years ago, um, Eric had kind of come up with this concept and was kind of pitching it around the cosmos, trying to get it. I think originally it was going to be built on secret. Um, there just di didn't work out in terms of funding, timing, resources, everything. So they were kind of looking for a new place to land. And I was already talking to their team and uh, Archway came along and they had really cool concept. I really bought into the idea of the, the application layer being what drives value and then th that the developers need to have a larger share in it. So like the overall ethos kind of made sense to me. Um, with it being like a very economically focused, but also developer focused chain. And I thought it made a lot of sense for Astro Vault and, and so did Eric. So that was kind of the original connection almost was um, we saw this chain that aligned in a lot of ways. They had a really strong team uh, and Eric had this really cool project that would work well. So they kind of, you know, joined forces. And so I've actually been a proponent of their decks even before it was called uh, Astro Vault. Max has been a fan of Astro Vault for a while now, but what is so special about this decentralized exchange? Pay close attention to what Max has to say. It's actually a very similar model to what Coinbase has. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's almost, if, if you really break it down, it's very, very similar. The difference you kind of would notice is on Astro Vault, you have X assets or like derivatives that will show you they're basically your, your voucher to redeem your state collateral. Um, whereas on Coinbase, instead of, of them giving you a voucher, they just give you the liquid tokens like Atom but they just give you 5% APR because they're staking the underlying and they're taking the difference, right? Mm -hmm. But what they're not doing is verifying with the user that they have the right to pull these out. So that's why you'll see, you know, withdrawals pause on um, Coinbase here and there because they just don't have the liquid assets to let people withdraw. So they have to wait, they have to unstake, they have to bring in liquid assets. So with, at least with Astro Vault, because it's on chain, you can monitor these things and you can see verifiably that your staked assets are actually staked to the native network. So. One thing I think that they do with these X assets is just a lot more visibility into the model and, and into what's actually backing um, the liquidity that is in these pools, right? And, and these derivatives, because ultimately you're only getting that once a quarter from Coinbase via their 10Q and then annually with their 10K that they file with the SEC. So I think that's where it's like, we, we need to take more of these Web2 concepts that work like Coinbase, like a real business model that is profitable and bring it on chain. And the only difference is the, the fees and the staking rewards are split amongst the LPs instead of just Coinbase. Max compares Astro Vault to Coinbase, pointing out that Coinbase, with a chance of pausing withdrawals due to a lack of liquid assets, lacks the transparency that Astro Vault provides through its use of X assets for clear collateral redemption. He suggests bringing successful Web2 models onto the blockchain and emphasizes Astro Vault's transparency, enabling users to easily monitor and verify their staked assets, unlike Coinbase's less clear quarterly and annual reporting. But we know how easy it is to use Coinbase. What about Astro Vault? So I think there's a couple things like one, creating an easy on-ramp is number one, like make it easy for someone to get into your protocol. And I think they've done a really good job with that. So they, they've set up like fee grants. So like if you um, bridge over, let's say like one atom, I think the minimum is 0.5. Uh, it'll actually fee grant you a small amount of arch. 
so that you can make your first transaction on their decks. And you don't have to go anywhere to do that. So as long as you bridge in that atom, you'll have the arch for gas so that you can swap that atom into arch. And now you're ready to go, you know, be in the ecosystem. They'll have the same thing with USDC through Noble. So those are those are like big pieces just to onboard users and make it easy to get into the ecosystem and start using applications. But ultimately, like with Astro Vault, they're going to have a more of like a hardcore user base, right? They're going to have the more hardcore DeFi user base, I should say. So I think they're kind of aiming at a different um, like demographic because they're really looking for one protocol teams. So like actual layer ones who want to provide liquidity. Um, so almost like institutional, you could you could frame it as right. Because what they're trying to do is take dead capital and bring it over to their to the exchange, utilize it, make it so now it's securing the native networks. Because you know if you take some of your community pool and you bring it over, let's say just to make it easy, Adam, they bring over some Adam from the community pool, they put it on Astroval, right? So now Astroval will stake that underlying Adam to the Adam Hub, and you'll get your X asset as your derivative asset. So what they're doing is now securing the Adam network. They're putting more Adam bonded to the network, further securing it. Meanwhile, you're still letting the users use that derivative asset to continue to trade it and do things with it and get more capital efficiency, knowing that you're actually earning from it still because if you're in these pools, you're earning those emissions. They're going to the LPs. So it's really just allowing people to further incentivize and utilize their, their derivatives um, while still securing the native network, which to me is great utility. To sum up, AstroVault prioritizes user-friendly onboarding with fee grants, targeting a dedicated DeFi user base and incentivizing the use of derivatives to secure native networks and enhance capital efficiency. All right, Max, what about other integrations on Archway? Anything really interesting worth sharing? One thing I saw recently, actually, yeah, I'd say one thing I saw pretty recently that's cool is uh, mempools. They're, they do like uh, on-chain alerting, event alerting for on-chain events and, and things like that. And they've been integrated, I think, with a few different chains, but um, certainly with Archway and, and a lot of our wallets, so you can get like push notifications to your phone. But what I think is really cool is that they're actually adding a feature to um, basically, like it's called ZK Automate. And it really is using ZK to run automated, you know, event triggering. It's it's similar to like a cron job, but what it, what's really unique is that it can be done codeless. So you can kind of set up workflows with like, you know, kind of drag and drop and then like, putting it out into a workflow and then creating the actual underlying like code to run it. So even a, a non-developer could build out strategies. Um, and this could be something as simple as auto compounding or restaking. It could be as simple as, you know, collecting rewards, um, swapping them and then sending them to a different chain, swapping them to a different asset. So then it opens up this uh, possibility for like arbitrage strategies and all these different things you can do just by automating events on chain. Um, and then on top of that, what I think is really cool is the ZK side, because then it protects uh, at, at least like pre-execution, like strategies. So you can basically have a strategy that is not public to everyone. Um, so they can't just copy trade you or, or steal it. But what you could do is then allow them access to it um, so that, you know, you can earn from it, basically monetize your own strategies you're building. So I think that's a really cool like use case um, in general is just being able to create automated workflows. If you're, whether you're running a business on chain, whether you're a protocol team trying to manage a treasury or you're just a user trying to automate daily tasks, it's an amazing tool for that and allow anyone to basically be able to do that on chain. And I think that's huge for setting up um, like more, I guess, user-friendly ways of interacting and it creates on-chain activity, which is ultimately what drives value, um, at least Archway. What's cool is that it adds a layer of protection so that your strategies aren't easily copied by others. This feature streamlines on-chain activities and ultimately contributes to the overall value of Archway. Another reason to like the chain. Now, Max mentioned ZK Automate. I hear about ZK a lot, but not a lot around Cosmos. First, let's take a look at what ZK is. In ZK rollups, the term zero knowledge refers to the use of zero knowledge proofs for on-chain transaction verification without requiring interaction or trust. Zero knowledge proofs are cryptographic proofs that can demonstrate a statement's truth without disclosing any information about the statement itself. ZK technology is going to play a critical role in the next bull run because we're trying to find a balance between preserving the privacy and also understanding who the users are from a regulatory perspective. But do we have this type of technology in Cosmos? In the Cosmos, it's definitely being worked on, but it's, it's not as prevalent. I know a few teams working on different like ZK tech projects, like uh, another cool one's Fairblock. Um, I've been talking to Payman, who's I think one of the co-founders of Fairblock. And they're actually building, I think, a module for the SDK, but 
it basically provides a pre like mempool privacy or like pre-execution privacy. So at least it prevents like front running. Um, so you could trade on DEXs, you know, without being front run or um, sandwich attacked or what have you. So even just like having certain protections, like adding a module that can encrypt the mempool prior to the transaction is a huge benefit to the Cosmos and really helps prevent um, a lot of the stuff we see with MEV happening on, on Ethereum. So like Fairblock is a really cool one and they're using ZK as well to do that. Um, so there's definitely projects being built that will utilize ZK. Um, a lot of the privacy projects will probably incorporate it more, but there's a lot of value to like ZKPs um, even outside of just, you know, using them for like a privacy chain. Like you could eventually use ZKPs. Uh, this is another product that's actually being worked on, not I say that, is uh, to basically verify KYC. Um, you basically have to have a, a third party who's going to house like the the records and then they will basically verify via ZK proof that you, you know, qualified for whatever criteria was selected. Um, assuming you pass, then it just gives them the result that it was verified that it was correct and you're passing KYC. So now there's a way for like decentralized protocols to build KYC and AML directly into their interface without actually getting the user data or like putting the user data at risk. Um, the, the user can basically just verify that what they said is true without having to give that information to the actual protocol. So it's very interesting um, from like a user like security side. Um, and also just something I think is much needed in this space is the ability to apply, to comply with regulations and do things like KYC from the front end so you can protect yourself as like a application um, owner or a builder. Tons of amazing stuff happening in Cosmos on Archway. If you're a builder considering building on Archway, feel free to reach out to Max and be sure to tune in to future videos where you'll get content you won't find anywhere else. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next video.